Hi, my name is Mark, and I'm deaf. Hi, my name is Candace, and I'm deaf. And hello there, I am Ryan, and I am D-A-F deaf. Hello. We're starting a new TV program called Deaf can TV. I am the host. And I'm the hostess. And I'm your roving reporter. And we're looking for you. For you. You. That's right. If you have any kind of talent, dancing, or singing, or poetry, or storytelling, any kind of skill, contact us. But we do want deaf and hard of hearing people. So please just go to our website, as you see here below. Fill out an application and we will get in contact with you. So if you have events that are around the community, maybe a baseball tournament, fishing tournament, um, just different things, a performance of some kind, anything that's out there, give us uh, a contact and we'd love to hear from you. We'll come out to your location, film you, maybe do an interview um, back and forth. I noticed that many hearing people think that all deaf people are alike, right? That's yes, right. right. Of course. Now, while we do have similarities, we are also individuals. We are different. We would like to introduce ourselves to you in a very unique way, okay? So come on, let's go. I was born deaf. Different? Why? I'm curious, why is that different? I was not born deaf, but I became sick with meningitis oh, okay. at about seven months of age. What about you? I had a similar situation as she does. Um, at seven, uh, seven months old, I uh, was Six hit with an illness. Six months old, okay, fine. Now my family was hearing, I was the only deaf. Yep, same as you. My brothers and sisters? Yeah. They were all hearing? Did They're they sign? Hearing. Yes, right. Same. A little bit? No. A no, bit. yours didn't? Uh, both sisters um, are proficient in sign language, very strong. Um, they're really natural at it. Um, at first, not so much, but uh, as they got deeper into communication with them, it, it became cool. very nice. I wish my family signed. Yeah, it's nice. My sister, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I went to an oral school. Why? I grew up going to a mainstream program for middle school and high school. Um, I was the loan in the mainstream program there all the way to my senior year and then uh, went to um, a deaf charter school. After I graduated from there, uh, was out oh, in the community okay. from there. What about you? I grew up mainstreamed as well, elementary through Wait middle school. Wait a minute. Now I noticed something. You sign mainstream with one finger and you sign with five fingers. What's the difference in the sign? Well, for me, in middle school and high school, I was the only deaf kid oh. in the entire school. That's just like me, middle... School oh, you in as high well. School. Did you have an interpreter? No interpreter for me. Now, see, I did have an interpreter. Oh, yes. I had an interpreter. Yeah, I did. Okay. 
So now, what about you? I like to model. Hmm, different, huh? Well, what do you like to do? What are your interests? Now, now, modeling, not so much my thing, but I did get involved in acting in the theater. Like, what kind of acting? What did you do? Well, TV, um, the stage kind of uh, theater, uh, theater there. Um, mm -hmm. I got bo into both of what those. About, what about you, Mark? Ta-da! I like drama. I like to sing and sign, and I travel all over. But theater, I was involved in that in college. Well, really, dancing. I mean, serious stuff. It was a show called Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. And I did that, you know, that dance they did. I didn't sing with my voice, of course not, but I moved. That's cool. Now, I was really good. I had bottle, a bottle on my head, and I wow. could dance like this. Wow. Yep. In college? I love the stage, just like Ryan. You know, I'm a big fat ham. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I enjoy acting too, just like you guys. I was in a play called Sweet Nothings in My Ear in college. Oh. Yeah, and I've done some TV, some TV roles, mostly like, you know, small parts, extras. Well, last year there was a show called, well, The Wedding. Oh, okay. That oh, show, wow. My Wedding, was in that. Touch you. Mm hmm. Yeah, it was really fun. Fun. So I don't have any of that, any kind of formal experience in that sense. Um, I'm taught my experience uh, related to school and for uh, church uh, activities as well. Um, um, but uh, my father was also involved in some more professional acting stuff. So I guess you could say that it was in my blood. Cool. Well, good. Okay. What about you, Candace? Okay. Well, I have a cochlear implant. A what? Oh, sign it like this. Oh, huh? a cochlear. Mm-hmm, I see. Different. Okay, well, you, Ryan, why are you di different? Well, I've had no kind of devices like that. I did not have a hearing aid or a cochlear implant. I am profoundly uh -huh. deaf. So, aids don't help. Yeah, so those things wouldn't I see. help. What about you? I have two hearing aids. I like to hear environmental sounds and vibrations. Take them off, though. I'm stone deaf. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question regarding your oh, cochlear yes. implant. Or tell me I more like about it a lot. That. I can hear sounds, music, uh, animals, voices. Interesting. Oh, yes. Now, do you have one or two cochlears? Two. I have two. Wow. Do you get confused? Is no. It... No, no. I don't get confused at all. It's good for balance. Yes, I can find out which direction oh, the noise is coming interesting. from. interesting. Okay. Yeah, I like it. You know, my um, hearing deteriorated as oh. I was growing up. So, when I was becoming fully deaf, I decided with my hearing loss, as it was progressive. Now, do you wish, like, you could take, can, well, can you take them off? Oh, yeah, I can take them off, and I'm completely deaf when I take them off. Oh, oh. yeah. So is that the same with you with your hearing aids if you take them off? Yeah, I can take mine off too. I'm oh, totally deaf. deaf. All right, completely deaf at that point. Yeah, me, I'm profoundly deaf, so it wouldn't matter. Yeah, well, all people, you know, talking, I can just take them off. They can just keep right on talking. And I'm like, what? I can't hear you. <laughs> That's the advantage. Okay, well, let me ask you. When I was growing up, I was uh, pretty active in sports. So tell me, why different? The reason is because I, in high school, I was involved in football. And I thought, you know, I'll try. I'm a big boy. I can do this. <laughs> and so I went in and had the helmet on and the pads and the face gear. I didn't understand any of the talking. I was played def defense because I'm big. Well, I made all kind of mistakes. I went the wrong way, and the coach yelled at me, and I'm like, I can't hear you. I'm deaf. You know, I just want to play. That's and he'd right. keep talking. Right. 
Uh, so that's right. You didn't have an interpreter in school. So that must have no. been very frustrating for you. I can I can relate. Right. I just backed out. You know, I resigned from football. Got out of it. And you, you said you were involved. So tell me a little bit about yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was soccer. into soccer all growing up. And during middle school, volleyball. I got into volleyball. Played that in high school as well. And also, I was in the drill team. Yes, uh uh-huh, dancing. I really enjoyed it, yeah. What kind were you involved in? Well, for me, I was involved in a lot of different types of activities, baseball, soccer, uh, basketball, football, um, just everything growing up. And I would switch back and forth between those sports. As I got older, I got a little bit tired of it. I tended to focus a little bit more and got more involved into Mm -hmm. the theatrical parts of school. Um, And so my desire for that just kind of So you were involved in sports with hearing. Yes, it was a hearing hearing cast. You were the only deaf? Right. Um, That was until uh, my senior year. Um, I went to the deaf school over there, and once I joined that uh, cast, um, mm-hmm. that was really my first experience within deaf theater, um, getting involved with that as well. So did it feel good? Uh, communication in, uh, for the deaf uh, group was really much easier um, than with the hearing group. So, uh, and was able to bond a little oh. bit better as you, know, you started learning a little bit more of how to communicate, mm-hmm. how to sign, oh. um, fingerspell, all of that cool. kind of stuff. Okay. I am deaf. I am deaf. And just like them, I'm deaf. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Hi, hello, 
I am Mark Mitchum. My name sign is this. Right, Mark. I'm a singer. For many, many years, I've traveled all over the world. I've taught deaf people in different languages how to sing in sign language from their heart. Now, you see, a long time ago, I was involved in the world. The words to the song meant nothing to me. I just enjoyed the beat and the vibration and the rhythm. But one day, I accepted Jesus into my heart. And I knew that those words did not honor him. And I wanted to honor him with the words. So I practiced and practiced and got involved in learning the words and the facial expressions and the signs. And I knew that he was satisfied with me. And I want to share with you, how can you remember me? Think about me with music and that I sign and travel. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. They say that my chances of going to college and getting a good job are not that good. They say that I will have difficulty earning a college preparatory diploma. They say that my classroom performance will be behind my hearing peers. They say that when I graduate, I will have a fourth grade reading level. They say that I do not like to read. They say, but, I love to read. I am in fifth grade and read on an eighth grade level. I am actually in gifted classes and love learning. I plan to earn a college preparatory diploma and can't wait to go to college and become a movie director. What they say doesn't matter because I think I can, I think I can, I know I can. Hi, my name is Candace, and this is my name sign. I'm an ASL teacher here in Dallas, and I really enjoy teaching the students my language. It's really enjoyable. Anyway, today I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. Here's a story, one of those stories, and it's called Raining in the Kitchen. It's about my perspective and how my family... Uh, and I always managed my deafness or my hearing loss. One day, I was at home when I was a little girl, I guess elementary school age, and I went into the kitchen, uh, and when I got in there, I noticed there's a bunch of water streaming down like rain, and the water's coming from the ceiling, I noticed, from the light fixture. And so I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? So I ran over to the intercom and I tried to push the button and say, help, help. You know, and I thought I was screaming, but nobody came down. So I was thinking, well, what am I going to do? Hmm. I'm thinking I'll just get some pots and pans and, and I'll just put them right down there to catch the water. And so once everything was just dripping in the pots and pans, I went on and made my sandwich and went around, went about my business. No big deal. 
a little while later, my mom came down in the kitchen saying, what's wrong? And I said, oh, look, it's uh, raining from the, from the ceiling. <laughs> and my mom just likes to tell this story, you know, now that I'm grown up. She always says, that's just, you know, that's a, just, that's just Candace's way. That's just how Candace manages with her hearing loss. You know, that's Candace for you. Just go along, you know, just keep moving forward. It's no big deal. I mean, I'm deaf and I'm proud of it. You know, and if kids would make fun of me or, oh, anything, you know, like any kind of barrier that popped up, I was just like, huh, no big deal. Keep going. Put it behind me. And that's just my perspective on life. Around the globe, from sea to shining sea, from the Golden State to New York's Lady Liberty, across the vast ocean wide, even Paris, to Japan. Everywhere, deaf can. So check us out on Facebook. Just log in and look up Deaf Can TV and tell us where you are. Don't forget to click on like if you're a fan. Gonna give a global shout out. Death can. Well, hello there. This is Ryan Sims. I am your roving reporter um, from Death Can TV. And I wanted to let you know, I was uh, born in Texas. I grew up, went to a mainstream pro, uh, school myself until my senior year. Okay, and then I went to a charter deaf school my senior year. After that, went to a mainstream college, went through the courses there. So here we are today in front of Gallaudet University. And what I'm doing right now is I'm studying for my bachelor's degree. Um, as soon as I am completed with that, I'm heading straight back to Texas, ready to roll up my sleeves and get to work for uh, Def Can TV. Um, we're, I'll be traveling across the country to interview different people just like you. Um, maybe it's for a sporting event or an educational event, just all across the country for our deaf community. I want to hear from you. And just like I King Jordan had said, a deaf person can do anything a hearing person can do but hear. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to hearing from you. Again, I'm your roving reporter with Deaf Can TV, and thank you for watching. Well, hi there. My name is Daniel Cochran, and um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about a business that I own. The business is called Nails in Hands, and it uh, is a construction company. Uh, what we do is uh, repairs, renovations um, for housing, outside care, lawn care, um, just really anything that you might have in terms uh, of a need for your business. We cover everything. We're licensed. We cover everything that you can imagine. We're, I'm a, not only a deaf owner, but my team is also a deaf team. Um, now, I've heard from time to time that there are deaf people who feel uncomfortable when talking to hearing people. They feel maybe they're going to be taken advantage of. Well, come to me. I'll be more than happy to help you um, explain, maybe even help you negotiate until everyone is satisfied in the party. I want to make sure that all the work is satisfied with my customers, whether they're roofing, their kitchen, anything that we can add on. Anything that our customers want, we're more than happy to do it. So thanks so much for your time. Hello. My name is Eric Randolph. And I'm the pastor here at the Deaf Church. As I was reading in my Bible, I see that it tells me that God specifies who made the deaf. In fact, God says, I made the deaf. So I begin to think about that, that God made the deaf. 
And so does God make mistakes? Never. God made me and God made you. And so that goes right along with the theme that deaf can. Deaf can do anything they want. Deaf people can parachute and skydive. Deaf people can become medical doctors. Deaf people can become lawyers. They can do whatever they want. Deaf people can do everything except hear. And so I want you to think about that. Think about who made you. God made you and God made me. You're important to God. And God has a plan for your life. God bless you and have a great day. Now you know a little bit about us. And I hope that you want to know more about us. And if you do, go to our Facebook page and ask your questions. And I hope you've enjoyed our very first program. Watch us again next time. And remember, Def Can! Ready for this? You ready for this? You ready for this? Strong, strong, strong.